Would you welcome to the pulpit Minister Carlisa Carter Thomas? Father God, I thank you for this day, God. I thank you, Lord, for life, health, and strength, Father God. Lord God, I thank you for being in this place right now, Father God, for this opportunity that you've given me, Father God. Lord God, I thank you for your help. I thank you for my bishop and my pastor, Lord God, my mom and dad, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for the members. I thank you for the leadership, Father God. And as I bring forth this word, Lord, let them not see me, but all of you, Father God. And let it come out the way you want it to, that everybody, everybody may understand, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Okay, so um, my topic today was Mind Games, and it's a derivative of um, Battlefield of the Mind. But what I wanted to talk about is how we constantly go through this, this it's sort of a game to the devil in my opinion, but it's a war that we go through constantly in our minds. He's trying to give us thoughts that will counteract what God's will is for our lives. Mm -hmm. And he makes us think, okay, well this way will be better for me because, you know, this is what I want, this is what I want to do, but we really don't seek what God wants us to do. And in the Bible, we're constantly being warned that the devil is going to attack us, and he knows how to put these tricks in our mind to get inside of our head. Amen. And so when I was looking at, you know, scriptures that were relevant to this, I thought about Psalms 51 and 5. So that's why I want to go first. Um, so it's in the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 5. Okay, well, it's up on the screen. It says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So in that scripture right there, we already know that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, as most people always say. And if you didn't grow up in church, or if you did grow up in church, you, you didn't really receive the word like we do at BG. So after you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, that sin or whatever is being taught to you is constantly in your head. That's what you're being taught. That's what you learn. You get in the Word, but you don't really get that deep revelation, so you don't know how to apply it to your life. And it keeps going on and on and on. And that's a cycle that we get into until we really get saved and get into God. And we're being molded in whatever we know and shaping in that way. And it takes us a while to really get to that place where God wants us to be who He wants us to be. So, there's a lot of things that we don't understand. One is generational curses. The second thing is that the thief, com the thief comes but to still kill and destroy our lives and everything that God has planned for us and that we're in a game and in a warfare. So, those are three components that we don't really understand that are going on the whole time we're, in li we're living. But we don't see them because we, don't live we live in a physical world but there's a lot of things going on that's spiritual. So, let's talk about generational curses. All right, so the devil, he's roaming to and fro in the earth. He knows what's going on. He's been here since God said in the beginning. Yes. Now, God didn't say in the beginning, I created Satan. He didn't say, I created him in my image or in my likeness. So we know that he's not anything that we're supposed to be like. We're supposed to be like Christ. Right. And so we know that he's evil. He's going to try to bring these things to us. He knows what our parents like. He knows what our grandparents like. He knows what our forefathers like. And he's been watching us the whole time, seeing what will work in our lives to get us off of that path that God has put us on. Amen. Because when we were conceived, we were in heaven, and God was shaping and molding us and saying, okay, I'm going to put you inside of this person, but this is the plan I have for your life. But oftentimes, we don't really go with what that plan is because it hasn't been rooted in, in us when we were born, okay? Amen. We know that God has put something in us, but our parents don't usually say, you're going to be this and you're going to do that for God and, you know, train us in that way. Now, they might come to church and then get with it later on in life, but it's not implanted in you. So you basically being molded in that way. And then when you get into it and you get into God, those generational curses come into play. But they're in play before. So in that way, he's looking, okay, I can get her here, I can get her there. I can do that to her, I can do this to her. But what we have to realize is he's on top of his game. He's saying, okay, I can get her this way, I can get her that way, I can do this. Now, some people, the devil might have a girl walk past you, and you're like, oh, 
But you might look back at those pills in your cabinet and say, I need to take one of them so I can get up this morning. You know, it might not be that thing that might get somebody else, but the devil knows what he can use to get you from that path that he wants you to be on. Okay, now it might not be an apple like he used in Adam and Eve's time, but it might be, okay, I'm going to eat these chips, even though I know I'm supposed to be fasting. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And it's, it might not seem that bad. It's not that bad, Pastor. It's not that bad, Minister. But it's against God's will. And you might say, well, why in the world would an apple get Adam and Eve? Well, God gave them all these different apples and were like McDonald's of apples. You know what I'm saying? And God said specifically, do not eat of this tree. Amen. And I'm sure the devil watched Adam and Eve and said, okay, they've been looking at that tree that God told them not to eat of. I need to find a way to get to them to eat that tree so they don't get out of the will of God. So they won't be on that path that God has planned for them. And that is what worked. He talked to Eve and he said, okay, did God really say such and such and such? Did God really say da 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 And when people use those details, there's always a lie in between those lines. And that's what the devil likes to do. He likes to play tricks on your mind. Well, did God really say you couldn't do that? Did God really say you were going to surely die? Yes. He left out the part about it being spiritual, but that is what God said, that they would die. And they did. Spiritually, they lost their innocence. Yeah. All right, so let's go to 2 Corinthians 10. And I went to this scripture basically because the devil is trying to attack and get us out of that will and that way that God has for our lives. Amen. Oh, sorry, 4 from 7. I didn't mean, sorry. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 from 7. Thank you, Lord. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start reading. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in readiness the revenge of all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on, the, on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust in him himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. Okay? So the first thing I want to look at was that we need to cast down imaginations. And Pastor always says the devil uses people, places, and things. He comes in the form of a noun. He's going to use a, pe a person, a place, or a thing. But if you look in, in uh, school books, it says a noun is a person, a place, a thing, or an idea. Yes. So that can be a noun. And the devil likes to put ideas in our head to say, well, that, I really don't need to do that. I really don't need to follow you know, that so strictly. Or I, it's not that necessary. The devil likes putting things in our minds. Yes. And one thing I thought about was when Elijah was coming against Jezebel. And she was like this high priest of wickedness, and he was a prophet running after Christ. And uh, God had to remind him, you know, you're not the only one that's, you know, running after me. You're not the only prophet who's still running for me. You're not the only prophet who hasn't given in to Jezebel's way. So even though we have these imaginations and things we need to cast down, even when we do do what's right, we have to consider that we are not the only Christians that are doing the right thing. We're not the only ones that are running after Christ. Amen. Don't take God's love and kindness for granted because Amen. he can use someone else. Yeah. And that's one thing I had to realize. You know, many people say, well, minister, you are a unique person and you are running after God. But there are other young ladies that are doing the self same thing that I'm doing. Amen. And that's one thing we have to run after, being the best that we can be for Christ. Amen. All right, so now I'm going to go to John 10.10. 10. All right, it says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have life more abundantly. Okay? And when I was reading this scripture, I was thinking about how the devil does come to our minds. He wants to steal that will that God has for our lives. But then I went down to verse 15 through 17. 
And it was one piece that really stood out to me. And um, this, I guess I can correlate it after I finish. All right, is it up there? Verse 15 of the same chapter. Thank you, Lord. Okay. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I, I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, and one shepherd. In verse 17, as we go down. Therefore doeth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it up again. In this scripture, Jesus was talking about how we are of his fold. Even the people that don't want to do what's right, they still belong to him. He still died on the cross for them. Amen. He died on the cross for us. Amen. But the one thing I wanted to look at was that Jesus was seeking his father's will, even though that was something that he really didn't want to do. He didn't want to be beat down. He didn't want to have to sit up on that cross, um, burning in the hot sun, side ripped open. For people who would say, oh, well... I'll do that later. I'll do this for the Lord later. I I'll get on that path when the time is right, when I get about third back, you know? And I was thinking about that. If Jesus could run after his own father's will, how much are we that we can't run after God's will? After all the things that Jesus does and how he loves us, we can still do that same thing for God. We have to put forth that physical effort and say, I'm not going to be taken over by this game that you try to play on me, Satan. And even though we can't see him, he's still there. And that's what he uses, that we are not, we're in a physical world, so he's spiritual. We can't see him, so we think, oh, that's just my thought. That was what I was thinking. No, he's playing a trick on your mind because you can't see him. Okay, well, I'm going to just go ahead and do it because it's not that bad. So if Jesus can run after his father's will and way for his life, and he stood that after having to die on the cross, God didn't ask us to do that. So why can't we do what we're supposed to do? Because, let's go to the next scripture, Ephesians 6 and 12. Thank you for your word, Lord. Alright, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers and darkness of this world, yeah. against spiritual wickednesses in high places. And that's what's going on. We think that, oh, my mama said that, so I need to come against her because she did it. Or I'm coming against my brother and sister in Christ because they said something about me. Or I'm coming against this dude on the street because he did such and such. Yeah. No, you're not coming against them. You're coming against that spirit that's inside of them. Yeah. We have to realize that this is a spiritual war. Yeah. That the devil's not going to show himself. He's not going to just stand up here because then we'll be like, oh, that's the devil. I'm not doing that. Yeah. But he makes us think, oh, this is my thought. Or this is something that's coming against me. Yeah. So I have to go against that physical being. Yeah. It's not about what's physical in this world. It's about the spiritual warfare that we go through. Yeah. And that's why we have to be strengthened. We have to renew ourselves yeah. and run after the new man that's within us. If we run after who we were, we can't fight this battle the way we were supposed to. We're supposed to walk in that spiritual strength that God has given us. He said, take up my cross and follow me. So then, it's not about you. It's about him and his will for your life. If you're going you to do what the old man tells you to do, you're walking in that sin and shaped in iniquity being that is old. You won't be able to physically do what you're supposed to do for God. And you're not walking after what God has equipped you to do. Fighting that fight that's not in the flesh, that's in the spirit. Alright. So, um, I don't have much more to say. I think I've given you all about points. But, um, I'm just saying to fight the spiritual fight. It's not about what's physical. It's not about what's on the outside. You just have to fight that good fight of faith and fight in the spirit, not in the flesh. Because it's not about that. You know, when we watch movies, well, I don't, and I hope you don't, but when you watch horror films, you're really seeing the spiritual realm. You're seeing the demonic side of the spiritual realm. And people that watch it, if you're here, um, I was watching um, 
serving on TV and a documentary, and out came a commercial about Exorcist 3. And I was like, oh my God, they're still playing that one. They're telling you part truth, like Minister said. You can't exercise spirit. We did it Thursday night. You can't exercise spirits, but first of all, the person has to be willing. God doesn't play those back on the way you don't want to live right, he lets you live wrong. Right. I tell people, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. As long as you can live with the consequences of your actions, do what you want to do. Yeah. And that's your youth. A youth should be made on a leash to their parents. Yeah. And I'm going to keep saying it because it's not popular. It's not popular nowadays to say children should be in subjection to their parents. I know we have parents in our school that we call them, like Brother Tolliver, my son back there, and he said, don't worry about it, Pastor. I'm a hammy. Yeah. Okay. I'm not near the school, but I'll be over there in a few. Amen. And immediately his daughter starts crying. Why? Because she know, yeah. don't call my dad. Amen. Call my mama, but don't call, please, she'll say, please, please don't call my dad. That shows their instruction and discipline in the home. Amen. Walking in the spirit. Amen. That's what we were talking about. In the spiritual realm, yeah, there are demons, just Amen. like on horror film. Amen. 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 But in the horror film, God is defeated. Amen. They show a clip from the exorcist where the priest was praying, and he had to cross up, and the priest and the cross got thrown out the window. That's not happening. Come on, come on. They're preaching lies. Amen. God is greater yeah. than the yeah. devil yeah. and any of yeah. his demons. Yeah. Any of them. The blood of Jesus defeats it all. Yeah. You don't even hear that anymore in most churches. Amen. But the blood of Jesus, yeah. the word of God is greater than anything. Amen. And he is greater than you. Amen. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, yes. He is. I love what you said because it's going to be about you until you stop trying to make it about you mm -hmm. and start making it about God. Amen. Amen. When I was a child, I acted like a child, yes. but when I became an adult, I put away Thank you. I love, I love the word this morning. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Live in this spirit, walk in this spirit, which is living in this spirit. Amen. 